Hi there, my name is um, Harold Nowak and I'm a meteorologist, a retired meteorologist, um, living here in um, Melbourne, Australia. Um, and I'll be looking at the Collatz conjecture and its proof. Um, the date today is the 11th of May 2019. Um, now, most of the mathematics that I use um, in this attempted proof um, is nothing unusual. However, um, something a bit different, which some of you may not be familiar with, is I'll be using modulo representation, where for A mod B, A is the dividend, and B is the divisor. Um, so what that means, um, something like zero mod two are all the numbers that have a zero remainder when divided by two. Thus, zero mod two are all the even numbers. And um, one mod two are all the odd numbers. Uh, now, what's important to, uh, to understand about um, um, modulo use um, is how to transform mod y numbers into two mod 2y numbers. Um, now, say for example, you've got x mod y, um, and that is made up of x mod 2y and x plus y mod 2y, each being every second value of x mod y. Now, um, just to give an example, um, for all the even numbers, which are 0 mod 2, as I said, you have 0 mod 4 is every second even number, and 2 mod 4 are the rest of the even numbers. Um, similarly, 1 mod 4 is every second odd number, and 3 mod 4 are the rest of the odd numbers. And it's important to remember that A mod B usually refers to a group of numbers. So it's not a, it's not a single number, it's usually a group of numbers. Um, now, if we look at what the Collax um, conjecture is, um, what, it, what it does is starting with any positive in integer n, a sequence of numbers is generated using the Collax operators. Um, now, the conjecture is that this sequence will always lead to one. So um, if we have a look at uh, what the Collatz operators are, and um, they are when n is even, that is, that is it's zero mod two, the next term in the sequence will be n divided by two. When n is odd, that is it's a one mod two number, and the next term in the sequence will be 3n plus 1 divided by 2. Now, most definitions um, have the, when it's odd, uh, when n is odd, um, you have 3n plus 1, which is, which always, which is always even. Um, and then your next step is that you divide by 2. So you divide 3n plus 1 by 2. But I'm using, I'm saving a step here, really. I'm, I'm using um, 3n plus 1 divided by 2 as one step instead of using two steps. Um, but it's exactly the same thing. It's still the, the Collax um, conjecture sequence. Um, and, and you notice um, that the numbers in the sequence are always positive integers. Now I'll just give uh, I'll just give a short example. I think most most of you are, the most people looking at this video would be familiar with the Collatz conjecture. But basically, starting with n, um, we'll let's make n three. Now um, it's a positive integer, so that's that's fine. Um, it is a odd number. That is it's a one mod two number. So therefore, you use the operator. 3n plus 1 divided by 2. Now, 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10 divided by 2 gives 5. Um, so that's the next term. Now, 5 is odd. It's a 1 mod 2 number. So you use 3n plus 1 divided by 2. 3 fires is 15 plus 1 is 16 divided by 2. That gives 8. Um, and 8 is an even number or a 0 mod 2 number. So you divide it by 2. So 8 divided by 2 gives 4. Now, 
4 is an even number or a 0 mod 2 number, um, so you use n divided by 2 again. So 4 divided by 2 gives 2. Now 2 is an even number, a 0 mod 2 number, uh, so you use n divided by 2 and that gives you 1. And, and that's the end. So that's the end of the sequence. So the sequence is 3, 5, 8, 4, 2, 1. And yes, um, you know, it ends in 1, you know, as predicted. Um, now, um, this is a very, very important um, note. Um, the collats operators are nothing special. There are a large number of similar operators that start at a positive integer, integer and always go to one. Now, um, just, to, just to show you a bit more of a, of a complicated example, um, I'll just give this as an example. Say you start with a positive integer n and you generate a sequence with the following operators. If n has a value of 0 mod 3, that it, it, it's, it's a number that's divisible by 3, use the operator n divided by 3 to get the next term. So that's going to give you, an, uh, that's going to give you another integer. If n has a value of 1 mod 3, that it's, it's 1 more than a number divided by 3, the operator is 4n minus 1 divided by 3. So say, for example, if the 1 mod 3 is the number 4, that, that's, that's, you divide that 4 by 3, it's got a remainder of 1, um, so therefore it is a 1 mod 3 number. 4 times 4 is 16, minus 1 is 15, divided by 3 gives 5 is the next term. So you can see you end up with a positive integer. If n has a value of 2 mod 3, you use the operator 4n plus 1 divided by 3. So, uh, say 5 is a 2 mod 3 number, so 5, 4 is a 20, plus 1 is 21, divided by 3 gives you 7 to get the next term. Um, now, this is, this, is, uh, this is more complicated than the um, uh, Collax conjecture as, as sequence, but again, it, look, it always goes to 1. So, as I say, there's a, there's a hell of a lot of these things, so the Collax operators are nothing special. Um, now, besides going to 1, what do all these operators have in common? So, if basically the answer to that is starting with any positive integer n, they generate a sequence which always has a positive integer lower than the starting value. Now, that's the only condition they need to satisfy. Um, and once, and it's easy to prove that if, if this is the case, then the generated sequence must always end in one. It always must go to the lowest positive integer. Um, so just I'll, I'll prove it. to prove it, I'll just I'll give um, I'll start at the bottom. Um, starting at say two. Now remember all 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 integers um, in their sequence go to a lower positive integer. So if 2 goes to a lower positive integer, it can go to 1. That's all it can go to. So therefore, 2 goes to 1. So you proved it for 2. Um, if you look at 3, now 3, if 3 goes to a lower um, positive integer, it can only go to 2 or 1. But if it goes to 2, we've just said that 2 goes to 2 goes to 1. And if it goes to 1, well, it's gone to 1. So 3 goes to 1. Um, if you have a look at 4, 4 um, can only go to 3, 2, or 1. But we've said that 3 goes to 1, and we've said that 2 goes to 1, and if 4 goes to 1 directly, well, it's gone to, it's gone to 1. You can continue on doing this. You can say 5. 5 goes to 4, 3, 2, or 1. But 4 goes to 1, 3 goes to 1, 2 goes to 1, and 1 is 1 itself. So, therefore, all positive integers go to 1. Um, and that is the fundamental property um of these um all of these um all of these operators th that's what they all have in common so now to prove the collatz conjecture uh, you must prove that the collatz operators generate a sequence that has a positive integer lower than the starting value 
and this must be true for all starting values that it's all positive integers. Um, so, so what people have been looking at so far in trying to prove this conjecture, they've all been trying to prove that you always end up at one, but ending up at one is really an emergent property. It's, it's, it's not a basic property of, of, of the sequences. Um, and that's possibly why it's been difficult to um, uh, prove the Collatz conjecture. Um, so what I'm, what I'm doing in this proof is, is using a step-by-step -step, uh, elimination of all positive integers, systematically eliminating the positive integers which have their Collatz sequence, which have in their Collatz sequence a positive integer less than the starting value. So we do it step by step to just eliminate eliminate um, the positive integers, um, and this is Im important. Where the modulo um, method of doing it um, makes makes it reasonably easy to do this. So let's start off with n any positive integer. Step one: uh, apply the Collatz operators. There are two possible outcomes, and um, the Collatz operators can have uh, zero mod two. That's the even numbers, they go down. That's n divided by two. One mod two, that's the odd numbers, they go up. Three n plus one divided by two. So we can eliminate the all the even, even numbers already, zero mod two, because they've got a positive integer that's uh, less than the starting value there. So, so that's in step one, we've uh, eliminated 50% of all possible starting as um, starting values. So we've eliminated all the even numbers. Um, the next step is step two. Now in step two, there are four possible outcomes, depending upon whether the starting value was zero mod four, one mod four, two mod four, or three mod four. Now zero mod four sequence, uh, if you have a look at that, that's down, down. 1 mod 4 sequence is up, down. 2 mod 4 sequence is down, up. And 3, three mod 4 sequence is up, up, um, rather than giving you the actual formulas. Now, 0 mod 4 and 2 mod 4 have already been eliminated in step 1. They are each separate halves of 0 mod 2 which I pointed out earlier uh, when, I, when I talked about the, um, the uses of mod. So what you're left with is one mod four and three mod four. But in step two, um, the up-down sequence of one mod four takes it to less than the starting value. Um, so in step two, one mod four is eliminated. So that is 50% of the remaining numbers have been eliminated of all positive integers 75% have been eliminated by step two. Okay, step three. There are eight possible outcomes. Um, you'll notice that the outcomes are two to the power of the step number. Um, but anyway, and there are eight possible outcomes, but from step two, we've only got three mod four left. So three mod four goes into uh, step three, and I, I showed earlier on how to break that up. It's made up of the two halves, three mod eight and seven mod eight. Um, now they have the sequence up, up, down, and up, up, up. They both go to, they both do not go to less than the starting value. So in step three, nothing gets eliminated. Um, and in the next next slide, I'll show the table out to step six. Um, the uneliminated number of modulo values is increasing, but as a percentage of the number of outcomes or the number of integers, it's falling rapidly. We can see that the total number eliminated of eliminated integers is at 87.5% at step five and step six. Um, that's because step six doesn't eliminate anymore, but you can see that's quite a large number. Um, so the there's a number of, uh, you can see the number of integers eliminated um, on the top line there. 
Um, and that's out to step six. And down the bottom, I've just got um, numbers that have been eliminated and numbers that are remaining or haven't been eliminated or uneliminated um, in, in the modulo form. Now, um, the next, I've shown a graph of the uh, percentage of integers that have been eliminated at each step all the way out to 100. Um, and as you can see um, from, the, from the graph, um, by the time we get to step 100, um, you, can't really, you can't really see it because it looks like it's at 100 um, because of, the, because of the, um, the, what of, what of the percentages um, are going from zero to 100. But um, at, by the time we get to step 100, 99.983% of all possible integers that can, that can start a kite sequence have an integer in the sequence that is lower than the starting value. So that is 99.983% of integers have been eliminated. And generally, the more steps you take, the higher the percentage gets. So you can ask the question, and in the limit, as the number of steps approaches infinity, does the percentage approach 100%? Um, and unfortunately, uh, I think the answer to that is no, you cannot show that to be true. Um, the next graph shows the percentage of uneliminated outcomes that are eliminated at that step. That is, when you get to this step, you've got this many uh, uneliminated, um, and how many are eliminated um, at that step. Um, you'll see the first two steps, um, 50% gets eliminated each, but it dro drops away and you get somewhat regular pattern um, after about um, 30 to 40 steps. Um, and you can see that there. Now the, the next graph is a graph of the log of the number of uneliminated integers uh, for each step from 34 to 100. Um, now, the reason, I've done, the reason I've done this is because of that regularity in the number um, being eliminated um, at, at each step, um, the, the, you, what you should have, what you should find um, is that the log um, of the uneliminated uh, integers should be linear. Um, with a negative slope. And as you can see from the graph, I put it in a line of best fit there, um, it, it looks pretty linear um, once you get past that 30 or 40 steps um, out to 100. Now, what you can do is extrapolate this line of best fit to get to say step 200. And if you do that, you get 99.99994% of all integers have been eliminated. That's six in every 10 million integers that have not been eliminated. Now, I've used this extrapolation because working by first principles would mean I'd have to work in modulo two to the power of 200. And that requires a, a lot of computing capacity. To put that number into perspective, um, that's a lot more than the number of days, two to two, two to the power of 200 is a lot more than the number of days that have passed since the universe um, first began at the Big Bang. So, you know, it's a, it's a huge number. So um, we can now come to a conclusion. Um, and the conclusion basically is um, no, I have not proved the Collatz conjecture. I have not proved for, that for all positive integers that Collatz operators generate a sequence with a positive integer less than the starting value, uh, which would mean that the sequence always goes to one. But I think by looking at, at the percentages there, I think I've come close, come um, pretty close to proving that uh, yes, it, it's um, uh, most likely most likely true. Um, and uh, and that's it. Thank you very much from Harold Nowak.